Okay, to start things off with, we would like to know what units we're probably gonna be making whatever matchup we get. So there's four possibilities. Five actually, counting random. If it's orc versus orc, we're going blade, grunts, raiders and walkers. With one Kodo and Shadow second. If they're also Blade. If they're Farseer, it's Blade TC, Grunt Raider Walker, with one Kodo. If they're Night Elf, we're going Blade Shadow against Keeper. Getting Snakes and Heal and Grunts and Shamans, and then eventually Expansion, a Kodo, and two Raiders. If it is Night Elf, with talents, we're gonna go Blade Shadow with Snakes and Hex. Hex first. We're gonna force a fast expansion with Triple Tower. And then we're gonna cheese a bit. And then we're gonna make a mixture of Kodo, Headhunter, Raider, Demolisher, and Bound Riders. If they're human, we're gonna go Farseer, Headhunters, TC. And then either expansion with Shamans. Or Greetings, we're going to go Shaman Taran, or just Headhunter Shaman. Or we're going to go Headhunter Shaman, and if they're doing rifles, we'll switch into Grunts. And if they're doing Mass Breakers, we're also going to switch into Grunts. I'm not going to do Taurans anymore, probably. And that's going to be with Farseer TC, and in Shadow 3rd. If they're undead, Blade, 3 Grunts, Shadow, Tier 3, TC. Kodo next. And then we're going to make Berserkers. And Walkers. Now that we know what we want to make, we familiarize ourselves with the hotkeys. I put all my unit producing structures on number 4. Barracks, Bestiary, Totem and Lodge will all be grouped in number 4. That means when I press 4, I press G for a grunt from the barracks, which has the priority over everything else. It's on top when you look at the selection. Barracks first, then it's bestiary, then totem. So if I press 4G, it's grunt. 4G, tab, R, is a grunt and a raider. 4 tab R, is a raider. 4 tab tab W is a walker. You can make it easier for yourself by putting everything on a different number. Barracks on 4, Bishri on 5, Totem on 6. It's up to you. But those are my control groups. So when I enter a fight, I try to do a mental check to see if Grand Raider Walker is still what I want to be making. If it is, I press 4G, tab, R, tab, W, during the fight, as often as I want. If I don't want the grunt, I skip the first G, obviously. Now, if I'm not sure what I want to make, I actually don't macro during the fight, because I don't have time to think about it. But if it's headhunters, it's 4T, for troll headhunter, I believe it's the T, my body knows, even if I may not know. Uh, I think it's 40, uh, and then I could do tab K for Kodo Beast is HH plus Kodo. Maybe I want to make a switch to counter air or casters or huntresses. Another rule is always macro right before the micro begins. Even if you forget your macro, at least you have started it. Think of this as the equivalent of if you're going to do a 45 minute workout session, make sure you roast the chicken before you go to do the workout session. So that when you're done, you can eat. You're not going to get hungry after the workout, then start to make it. Because it's too late by then. Same with the Grand Raider Walker. You want them to come in to replace units. Another cool thing is to go over 50 right before a fight and then use it. Then you got a 60 food fight. Right? But you can also go 50 food fight with plus 9 coming. So you're essentially 59 food, but not using it yet. Any race, any heroes, any units, just do the greatest tower rush on Twitch ever. We'll do the murkiest scheme. Thanks, Sage, coming up. 
Sorry for 59 food, but not using the final 10 yet. It's an under optimization of our current investment. However, if we kill three units and we lose three, we're back to 50. Right, so we're back to 50. Is optimum efficient army for 100% mining. So our the time we spend on 60 food minus penalty income is as short as possible because we went to go ahead and lose three units immediately. Sometimes if I fight against talents, I have five grunts in the past anyway, all at one HP. I saved them really well. I sent them back to base. Now I have five grunts at home, taking up food, costing me upkeep resources, and they're worth nothing. So I'm losing money on something that has no value. Would have been better to just lose the grunts in fight or better yet kill them myself right before they die. I want to replace grunts against talents with raiders and walkers. So saving them extra micro effort for a negative reward is bad. They're obsolete. They're throwaways. Grunts have no value against talents almost. But master, yes. So let's go begin the game and I'll try to make special mention of every time I do macro. And maybe I'll make mistakes. Maybe I'll play perfectly. I don't know. You can keep uh, track of it. But hopefully with uh, my markers, my verbal markers, you can try to work on your own macro during the game as well. But if we don't dehumanize the neutrals, has duty and how can we kill them so callously gonna start with ba make the altar or against link on twisted meadows note that i have i'm back to the 1650 zoom because i'm playing on batonet right now hope it doesn't bother you all too much to have such kind of different perspectives wouldn't want to become an echo chamber lol so I had the pre-explanation for the game. You remember the compositions that I mentioned? Remember the different possibilities of opponent's compositions and what units we're going to be making? What up, Adamo? So we're gonna open up with the altar, into the burrow, into the barracks. I'm gonna go blade. Three grunts, one burrow tech. Now, because this is Twisted Meadows, on Batonet, every location is possible. On W3 Champions, it's only cross map. But on this map, every location is possible. So we're gonna send a quick peon scout. Looks like we have found him. He wouldn't be here so quickly unless he came from here. Now, here's a trick of checking whether they are somewhere. Go to this outcropping, this piece of the grass. And you will see whether they have the tree or not. Now, if he's going keeper and huntresses and I make my shop here, I will lose it very cheaply, which is bad. It would offer a lot of information. Okay, he is here. It was in fact not far enough. Uh, this looks like he has Ancient of War here. There's something missing. There's no Ancient of War. He wouldn't need a second Moonwell unless he has one, right? Because for Wisps and Hero, you only need one Moonwell. So we're gonna check, where's your Ancient of War? Okay, we found it. We're gonna keep the peel next to it. Most likely his hero comes here. We have Control Group 4 is our stronghold, our Great Hall. So the, now we are moving our blades. We're looking at the minimap and our Lumber Count. When we reach 190, I press 4U to upgrade now he went triple moonwell into yeah he went inch to four triple moonwell what that means is slow tech it's a slow tech now that we know it's demon we can actually make our shop outside of our base this is pretty cool because it becomes a very far out scout to see if he's making use of the middle of the map. We decided to go without a voodoo lounge. Why? 
This is not a creeping map. It's a stop someone from doing big camps map. We can see that he's going triple Moonwell and Hunter's Hall with the second Ancient of War. And that actually makes me cancel my shop. Because I'm thinking, hey, two Ancient of War on tier 1? That's Mass Huntresses. Now, there's a big difference between evaluating Mass Huntresses or fast expansion into Mass Huntresses. Some of this recognition comes with experience, but it is not possible for him to have made a tree of life at the moment and still make Second Age of War and Hunter's Hole that quickly. He doesn't have the money for it. So, because I recognize that, I know that he's going to be all in. Tier 1. We call that all in because he doesn't really have a future if and when this fails. When he's all in, all I need to do is survive. The biggest r mistake I could do is to take a risk. I don't need to take risks because he is going to kill himself on my burrows. I put all my peons that are mining lumber in control group zero. You can choose your own, but I like zero. Grunt here to reveal. And then we're expecting his archer to move, so we already select the grunt to start doing blocks. We survive. We're gonna bring our grunts here, control group two. And our blade goes home with control group one. Second hero, Tarn Chieftain. I like Tarn Chieftain actually. Tarn Chieftain is not the best into Huntresses. But it is good against Mana Burn. After Shadow Hunter has no mana, he's nothing. He's a, a headhunter, a strong headhunter. But after TC has no mana, he still has Endurance, which doesn't require any mana. We see now that he's teching while producing Huntresses. This again means, and I really don't think you can know this if you're kind of new at the game or not super good at the game, but I know it means he cannot possibly have an expansion here or here or here. I, I know I wouldn't be able to know that had I been kind of new at the game. You just don't know how much money someone has, what it means, but I know. So we don't have to scout for an expansion. You might have to. We now see, oh yeah, he has dust of appearance. We're gonna go behind the gate. We're gonna repair. We'll wait for dust in eight seconds. And then you have to miss your shockwave to give him a false sense of security. I like keeping my TP against uh, Mass Hunts because I will be doing a hit and run later. The blade, I didn't really believe we are going to get uh, the kill. But what it does achieve is his Huntresses was running home. Did he need to? No, but most likely their multitask not going to be good enough. Against Mass Hunts on Twisted, I developed a strategy a long time ago. It's Blade and TC with Grunt Raider. No casters because even if it's Beastmaster first, no casters, just raw units. Every Grunt and Raider has the power to pillage. And we get War Mill upgrades. The War Mill gives us access to fortified defenses, which, if you remember, I called his strat all in. That means he will be finishing this game in my base. You think you have to go and kill someone to win the game, but it's not true. Some strats are designed to attack non-stop because they have such weak early, uh, late game. So they will kill themselves in your base instead of you having to go to theirs. Mark my words, the game will end in my base. Not his. I think so anyway. Of course, someone can always leave and hide farms or not recognize that they are losing. I have control group 4 for this, so I do 4G 
tab R to produce units. I'm gonna check his base. It is double lore, so he does actually think there is a late game. We're gonna take control group zero. You can see we can respond very quickly without messing up our economy mining. We are checking for expo now. I don't think he should have money for it, but the longer the game goes on, the less sure you are of it. Because it becomes harder and harder to judge how much money someone might have. We don't see any expansions anywhere. As you see now, the effect of him killing himself is getting more and more obvious, right? He just lost a bunch of units, killing nothing. And why? Because I'm able to use my knowledge of what's happening to uh, expect his next move. I now have fortified defenses, so it's going to become less and less effective what he was doing, and it already wasn't. Now, why do you think he attacked, even though there was no chance of him killing that shop without major losses? It's because strats tell their own story. You don't make units, then think what you're going to do with it. You first think what you're going to do, then you make the units to do it. Oftentimes, that puts you at a point of no return. Even if you're not aware of it. You're like, oh, I got all these hunts. I have 80% of the games that I play. I use all these hunts to do significant damage. Right? Because people overextend. Like, the orc could be, like, creeping this spot. Get creep jacked. Or maybe they don't have their peons on control group, so they repair it too late. And there's all kinds of conditions that can lead to me taking more damage than I should from something that I should recognize uh, is going to happen. So we're now going to do our first attack. We have 50 food, which is the maximum amount we want to be on while still maintaining optimum economy efficiency. We have used our control groups repeatedly to produce. We're now going to regroup our groups. Before I was control group, one is blade, two is everything else. Now I switch, one is all my melee and Kodo and heroes. And then my raiders are on two, so it's easy to do a bunch of ensnares. We're going to use F2 to put our TC in position and get a decent shockwave. If we kill his lures and his hunter's hall, he cannot reproduce his, his lures. Now he has no lore production anymore. We're not going to eat a dryad, even if we could, because it would give him vision of the Kodo. See, the game ends in my base. Here I am. GG. <laughs> Why did the player go dryad against Grand Raider? I don't think he's countering. I think he's just making uh his own strat he comes up with a strat that works he thinks the best for him which is heavy huntress uh pressure people generally don't don't scout so people are going to get surprised by a bunch of huntresses they're going to try to use their usual three grunts to attack against five six huntresses they're going to lose with the grunts they're going to use heal pod it's going to cost them money it's going to set me back I don't have my bestiary in the back, I have it in the front, it gets cancelled, then they go double lore, they have mass dryads, I get caught in a fight, I get slowed, I forgot speed scroll, I'm a noob, and then I lose some units, and then he gets the bears, and I, I'm still trying to work on countering the huntresses, that's why he's doing this kind of stuff, right, like, he's not particularly going dryads against what I have, he probably didn't even click my grand raider to see upgrades, Having said that, Dryads isn't bad, per se, against Grunt Raider. You just need good position, good hero levels, uh, and uh, good timing.